Now that we have our shell created and its dimensions set, it's time to go into the parts list and create some parts using formulas. So let's select our product, right click on it, and go to show parts list. Now before we create that bottom part, right now we're in the cut parts tab or worksheet and it's empty as we'd expect because it is a new empty product. But if we go over to the prompts worksheet, we see that there are already three variables defined that we're going to use and a couple of others that we're not going to use in this exercise. The values for width, height, and depth have been set according to what we created while still in the OverDrive Pro product list. So let's return back to the cut parts worksheet and let's program in our first part. Now since we're building something, let's start from the ground up. And it makes the most sense to start with our bottom part. So I'm going to call it bottom. I'm going to tab over to the quantity. And because I'm always going to have a bottom, I'm just going to hard code a value of 1 for it. Now the width of my part, going back over to the relationship between our part and product, the width of my part is equal to the depth of my product. But because the overall product is going to have the front and back just thrown against it, I need to subtract that right now so that I don't have an oversized product. So we do that by going equals inside my width cell equals depth, which is the depth of my product, minus G exclamation mark we're going to re reference that global variable that we created and we call that box underscore material underscore thickness times two and the reason for the times two is one for the front one for the back so when I hit enter it gives me a red value of 22.5 so the depth of my product looking at the prompt is 24 so 24 minus that global variable thickness which was 0.75 times 2 gives me an overall dimension of 22 and a half. The length, looking over here, the length of the part is equal to the width of the product. Since my left and right sides are just going to sit on top of the bottom, I'm going to have the full width of the product. So we can just come in and we can type equals width and tab over and it gives me the full value of 12 which is the full width. The thickness we're just going to leave alone we don't have to do anything it's going to pull that from the material file so we're going to go to the material equals m exclamation mark because we're looking to the material file workbook and we're going to do box underscore material. I tab over and it shows me that it has the three-quarter inch oak ply because that's what we set it to point to. The width one length two, width two length two, width one length one, we're going to skip those, we're going to skip the comments, and we're going to go over to the base point. Now before we pick a base point, we want to think about how we're going to rotate it first of all. Since this is the base, we really don't have to rotate it in any way. If we did, we want to consider the kind of rotation that we're going to do before choosing one of the eight base points. Since all the product origins are in the back left corner of that product, I generally like to try to choose a base point close to that product origin. So in this case, we have one being the lower corner and three being the back lower corner. I'm going to choose a base point of three just because I'm lazy and I don't feel like doing any of the shifting. So we come back over here and our base point we use 3. We're not going to worry about machine points for right now so we're going to go to the X, Y, and Z origins. I like to consider these X shift, Y shift, and Z shift. If we go back over to our relationship here our X shift is do I need to shift this along the X axis at all? Because my left side and right side are going to fit on top of it, I don't have to shift it in order to accommodate for that left side, so my X shift is going to be zero. 
My Y shift, however, because the back is going to be thrown on it and it's going to take up the entire dimension, I have to shift it forward the thickness of the back. And because negative Y comes toward us and positive Y goes away from us, we have to set this as a negative value. So this one's going to be equal negative G exclamation mark box underscore material underscore thickness. So it's shifting it toward us 0.75 inches, which is the thickness of that back. The Z origin, because it is the bottom plate, we don't have to raise it at all. So let's just go ahead and put in zero for our origin. We already determined that we don't need to rotate it at all. So I'm going to put zeros for all the rotations. And then the draw token for 3D. The code that we have to do is draw 3D box to tell Microvellum to tell AutoCAD to put it on a 3D draw layer. And let's just go ahead and give this layer its own layer and let's call it bottom. So I hit enter. Now we're good. So let's save this. Close it. And then we right click on our product again once it's highlighted. And we go to draw product. Draw 3D with machining. Although it doesn't really matter with or without because we haven't applied anything yet. So we draw it. Go back to AutoCAD and we place it. Since I'm in top view, I don't really see much here, so let's just change the view using SW Enter. And now we can see it. My width was the smallest dimension, my depth was the second largest, or the middle dimension, and the height was the largest, but we don't have anything that references height yet. So right now, we don't know if we've programmed it incorrectly or not, so let's go ahead and let's start adding in some more parts so we can see it. 